<laughs> hello, hello, people. What up? How are you? Uh, today I have Ram Al Saman. We are shooting the sixth episode of A Place for High Vibration podcasts, and he is a really peaceful guy. He, I really connect with him at a soul level. And today we're gonna cover topics like law of attraction, shadow work, which I think is so important. Have to how to have authentic and loving relationships and maybe integrating the spiritual and the material self. So Ram, why don't you please say hello and maybe introduce yourself to our viewers. Mm -hmm. Hey, hello guys. I'm really glad to be here on Sipa's YouTube channel and have my experience shared with you. And I'm feeling this gratitude and a bit of nervousness. And oh also excitement for this talk that we planned for it spontaneously yeah. um i have actually i was just the opposite of being peaceful it's something that i gained in my life i had like a difficult childhood and um i had the energy of fighter most of my life and i still have mm. it but now i had that like i a, had i had that as well into... uh, sorry for interrupting i had that energy of fighter as well and i realized i created so many problems but please go on uh ram yeah and i realized that it's like where you direct it like if you direct it in like opposing or if you direct it to spread what's coming from within so mm. my life journey was to learn first of all how to connect to my true self how to um come across knowing myself and come across to other authentically and wow. this is what I feel like sharing with you today about my journey, my integration journey from being more like identify with an aspect I thought that uh, was great at that time and realizing that I'm much more than that. Wow. And my journey with shadow work and healing and integration. And becoming peaceful, yeah. most importantly. Okay, so the first yeah. question would be what has made you shift yourself what has what has provoked the the change within yourself what happened mm -hmm. so i want to share a little bit about my background um uh, i'm from a, a spiritual minority group from middle east specifically syria which is called druze we are about like two percent of the population in syria and we had like spiritual background but my family were uh, very much like atheists so there was like no connection with spirituality and mm. like kind of like everything that's like out of the material world is like neglected and i grew up with a lot of um kind of like questions in my mind and later in life i started like reading books and like things that like kind of like provoke questions in me that mm. guide me to find a yoga school and in the manga and Basically, what was like my motivation to know all of this, because I always feel that there is something more to life than what my parents or what my society told me. So that was like the first motivation. And I start to realize that the connection that I have with my family, with my friend is not as deep as I wish for. And that was like the, kind of like where I start questioning myself and where I start on my journey. So, um, at that time in Syria, I was like having what I call like great connection, but deeper than that, I was also feeling this kind of like slight of loneliness. Like I felt there is so many people around me. I'm going to events. I'm invited to events. I was like a very social person. I had more than 1,500 Facebook friends. Everybody know me, but inside me, I felt like this loneliness of this like mm. kind of like seeking for deep connection. Yeah. And... I couldn't fulfill this and I didn't know the answer what for that. And later on in my life, I start to um, kind of having depression, especially after I moved to Switzerland where I worked um, with like, in the outside, my life looked like very amazing. I had worked with the United Nation and like made a lot of money, but everything was on the outside. Everybody seemed or looked at me that I'm living like a dream life. But in my inside, like I managed wow. to keep the, the unfortunate situation in Syria. I managed to work in Switzerland and later on I was like starting my education again in Germany. So everything seemed like 
amazing in the outside, but from inside me, there was like this deep loneliness and depression and feeling like mm. I can't, like, I, I don't have motivation to life. And then, you know, the winter here in Germany, those of you who live around this area knows how depressive and dark it is. So <laughs> it get me into a deep depression that was like, kind of like killing me slowly. So I was like thinking about suicidal thought many times a day. And I, I know actually it is one long time ago, but I read her book, The Shadow Before Dawn. And it, she, one of her exercise was like remembering that you can, you have the power to end your life at any certain point. And, but oh. before you do that, just think what you would like to do before that. And that oh. was kind of like a vibrational change for me. It was like where I start to realize that I have a choice wow. to do something different. So like changing vibrationally from the state of like powerlessness, hopelessness to empower, to make a decision was a like completely vibrational kind of like upgrade for me. Wow. So there so was now, like where I started now, to go out of depression and then I start to more diving deep into like spiritual, yeah, spirituality and life. Wow, what an yeah, interesting what, story. What, what, what yeah, an interesting what feel, st yeah okay yeah what Don't. actually feel called uh, a kind of like spirituality um 102 where you not only go in the direction of the things that you want but also understanding why you want those things like why i want oh. connection and that was so, like yeah yeah uh, she was saying like uh I want this thing because I don't want the other thing. And the purpose was to actually want the thing because you wanted it authentically. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not, so, not you, you don't want things now because you want to become famous or you want to be seen in the other world. You want, you want things because it is yeah. something authentic and you want to help the world and also grow with the world and help. Yeah, yourself. exactly. Exactly. You hit like really important points. So for me at that time, what was uh, the thing? I so, so, so don't want to be lonely. So instead of looking for why I'm feeling the pain of loneliness, I was looking like, how, what should I do? Like going to meeting. I get like many friends when I like settle down in Germany, but I was not facing the pain of loneliness. And that was oh. like the kind of like the first transformative, like, um, event in this like new phase in my life where I start to sit with my loneliness and accept it as part of who I am. <laughs> wow. Acceptance for me is really an important key. And I've realized that I've shifted the moment I began to accept myself and even understand the negative parts of myself and even understand the shadow maybe that is within myself. So it's like um, I, I felt obligated do certain things but i have made the mental and the emotional choice that i don't have to do anything that i don't want i don't have to prove anything that i don't want to prove i just have to be myself and in being yourself is like everything changes everything changes because they say that we attract how we feel and it's super important because when you accept yourself you will also start to feel different and attract different things Right? Yeah, totally. And that was like kind of like where I start to I remember I wrote a post, I love my sadness. Yeah. And that was like that was like for me, that was like, wow, I can see my sadness and feel compassion to the part of me who feels sadness. While before that I was like, Oh, I feel sadness, I should change that. And this is like where many people in the spiritual field they get stuck. They feel like all the sadness and pain that everybody feels and they kind of try to transcend to ultra spiritual person who <laughs> do meditation and yoga yeah, and everything. Yeah. You just so like we, what you're run saying away is that, from the, yeah. 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 You are saying that it's not about avoiding it. It's about accepting it, which is yeah. super powerful. And sit with super it. Powerful. And sit yeah. with it unconditionally. And that was like a huge like that actually was like where I start to really be compassionate with myself. Like we all know in spirituality that you have to love yourself, blah, blah, blah. But like actually those people who say you have to love yourself, look at them how they deal with their grief or how they deal with their anger or how they deal with the part who authentically are angry, authentically are sad or depressed or 
yeah. in a low vibrational state. So what we do usually with those parts, we try to, instead of like trying to integrate them and love them and accept them the way you are, we try to suppress this part. And that was like the topic of integration that uh, I'm really passionate about. Like even my business called New Earth Integration, because I believe that this is how we create peace inside us. Yeah. By yeah. So um, uh, this uh, accepting the emotion, even the negative emotion, leads me to one of the topic that we wanted to talk about, which is shadow work. Can you go a bit deeper into that and explain to us what that is? Yeah. So first of all, I want to let talk a little bit about integration because we just okay. like started. So for why I believe integration is is like <clears throat> one of the most important thing for us. Uh, we know all in the spiritual field that what you have inside is like what you have outside is a reflection of you. Yeah. And we, like the world is like reflection to what's inside us. And if we look at the world now, we live in a like really dangerous world. There's like crime everywhere. There's like so many wars happening around us, even like bloody wars or even like cold war, even like the whole medical system the whole jail and prison and all this thing it's just like so much violence and so much abuse and if we really apply this law of what's outside is a reflection of us then we see like wow there must be something really really happening inside me so integration for me is like a tool to bring the aspect of us who um kind of like have inter contradictory needs to be on the same page and that also brings us to the law of attraction because um, the law of attraction, we all say like what you manifest, what's your intention or what's your vibration. So what's your vibration will manifest outside you. But yes. many of us has many suppressed things and those things will, be, will also have the power to manifest. Mm. So, and this is why like um, an important point, like why I don't see the kind of like the have positive vibe to manifest something positive doesn't really work with many people and the reason is behind or underneath those positive vibes there's usually a lot of griefs a lot of pain a lot of suppression so actually you can imagine it as like there is like a huge berg of ice and there's a little bit of it outside the outside the the water iceberg so you can, yeah, people outside the, yeah so what what we have we have like a little bit of the iceberg above the like water level where we can see oh i'm what's the thing is this is my belief and like you write down everything and there is what i call the shadow which is like under the water and most of us don't see our shadows like shadow is something that either you are not completely not aware of it or you're not aware that you even have it oh okay so, so, so our manifestation okay. of life is basically everything so we manifest in our external everything, either we are aware of it or not. And here come like the point why shadow work is very important because it allows you to discover what's underneath the surface. So for example, yesterday I had a session with one of my clients and his um, goal that he's aware of is to manifest a healthy relationship. Okay. And what we did in the session, we tried to address or talk to the aspect of him that he doesn't want to be in a relationship. Oh. So I'm going to share like kind of like anonymously um, some information. So not to validate the privacy of the session. So what happened in this case, we get to know an aspect of him who understand relationship as the relationship to his mom and dad. And there was like very unhealthy relationship. So for this part of him, he believed relationship is something that a woman would take away your energy, would abuse you, would do something, take, um, take advantage of you. So yeah. I was like, all of this belief were completely unhidden. He, he didn't have access to this part at all. And that part was the one who kind of like protecting him and the perspective of this part, he, this part is protecting him from having a relationship with somebody. Okay. Uh, do you think it protected him in a positive or in a negative way? Like he had the belief that yeah. he, ha he couldn't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And how do, 
how do you fix that belief actually so that's like that's the amazing thing which i like about my work so what we do in this situation of course this part has his own reason to protect him this part when we talk to this part we found that he's a developing part that he's between age uh, to five to eight and at that time for this part the purpose of his life was to protect him from relationship though that part could take him out of house of his house and cut the relationship to his abuse like after he grew up her mom his mom were narcissists yeah and um, she had like a lot of issues and this part could protect him from the abusive relationship to his mom by going outside the thing is with the fragmentation and like many unconscious thing that we have we this part doesn't understand that the world is different because this part has the consciousness of a child so for this part he believed any relationship would have the same effect on the personality okay do so you what think happened this part yeah. keep manifesting and rejecting any potential relationship that can happen in this person's life and after wow. years and years and years because this person was not aware he couldn't actually manifest the relationship oh so um the question then becomes do we really attract what we believe or is it just happening is it really my I beliefs think, creating everything i think it ha it has some truth but i i mean it's like if we just say it like this and this is why i see like i'm i'm coming like from the mainstream uh, i study business information technology and i see that many people look at us as a spiritual circle as naive because we like bring this kind of like beliefs in a a kind yeah. of like um kind of like a superficial way like we say we we be, we manifest our thoughts but actually what why we why it's not that simple because like our thought our belief system is so complex that we can't really just understand by like realizing oh my thought is like that or i'm believing this thing or that thing yeah so and i so think actually, it's all about becoming and trusting the process trusting yourself and really getting to clear your emotional field in order to open the space for the universe to actually give you everything that you need so you and are discover. like yeah, yeah yeah and i think like discovering your emotional field because the discovery has the joy to like understand for for example this person when he discover that he has this um so breast aspect that he tried to protect him from having a relationship what happened he didn't get angry he get like compassionate like wow now i understand why part of me actually mm. doesn't let me get into relationship so before this session he was not aware of this belief completely and after this oh. like healing and shadow work he became aware so first of all he get first awareness of what's holding him from manifesting relationship and this is only one reason it could be more so we're going to find in the next session if there is more uh second thing he get like compassionate and this is like something very very important like for like if we have like a different kind of philosophy what we would do oh this part of me doesn't want him to have a relationship i would gonna push him away and things oh. doesn't work this way because yeah. you need to integrate this you need to let this part grow up you need to let this part that now you're living in berlin now you have like opportunity now you are way older now you can choose now you have your own world so kind of like integrating those children aspect in your whole in your full personality that would give you the integration and the feeling of integration feels like very expensive feels like your body is like growing okay so i think it's about uh, acknowledging and really observing your thought processes and really accepting and sending compassion to yourself this is what you are yeah, saying yeah and and more important your emotional process like what's yeah. happening underneath you yeah because the emotional field is like stronger than your thoughts your yeah, like till till swan said that your emotions are your friends they are yeah. not here to hurt you they are only showing you aspects of yourself mm -hmm. so cool totally so cool yeah. really and cool. she also said something i just read it again today she said uh, you can be authentic to the degree that you know yourself yeah your authenticity is would show up to the degree that you know yourself i and, really love this and being authentic is not always about being positive it's it's what is yeah. more important than being nice is being real 
Yeah. So and this is why I, I like your YouTube channel. Actually, I I saw another interview with you. Like you kind of choose people who are kind of like in the new kind of like awareness wave where yeah. it's not only positive focus, and if has positive focus, but more like acknowledging that there is like another whole world in the negative aspect of us that also yeah. has its own beauty and has its own reason. It's like uh, it's like the negative. Uh, it, it, this is how a mentor of mine has explained it. It's like there is no good or bad. There are just two different teams, like uh, like a football game. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that doesn't have the ball is attacking the one that has the ball. So it now you now realize that there is this opposition, right? Yeah. And these teams meet at the same point. They are not going in opposite ways. They don't want to separate each other from each other. So mm -hmm. it, it becomes a matter of acceptance and being aware that, yes, there might also be a negative emotion. There might also be sadness. There might also be resistance. Everything mm -hmm. is part of myself. Everything can be integrated, like said. Everything can be loved and everything yeah. can, be, can be appreciated and expressed as a new version of yourself. And yeah, it's like also I noticed through my work and our retreat and workshop, that people bond really closely when they ex when they express like pain or sadness or grief. Like when they experience this together, there's like a magical bond happen between them. Like we had in our retreats, people um, kind of like connecting to the in the soul level by just like being in the safe space where they can cry and be seen by others, and just like this opportunity to feel that you're, you can't cry. I, I also had it with myself at the first Teal Tribe gathering where you can actually cry. Like, and you know, like for us as a man, it's something really big that yeah. you should not cry. Like this, True. You, you need to tough up yourself. I also like in my society, I grew up with a lot of those beliefs. And I found that I, <clears throat> it held me so much from connection because people didn't see my vulnerability. And when I was able to show my vulnerability, it was like magic. And also, yeah. like, I, I would say that it's important to show it in the right place. Like, you can't just go to um, emotionally unconscious people and just, like, show your right. vulnerability because yeah. most probably they're not ready for this level of connection and you might get re rejection. So what I would, like, advise your audience, if they want to experience this level of connection, to look for somebody who are capable of holding space or just come to any of the retreat that we host or our friends also in Romania, they are planning to do something there. So I, will, I can recommend it or you will see it on my website. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm interested in, in connecting with as many powerful, spiritual, loving people. And uh, what do I, I, I wanted to say something, but I think I lost my idea. That's funny. That is super funny. Maybe we can breathe together and see what comes to you. Yeah, uh, I know that life is an ongoing process, but do you think you have found and do you think that there is something called soul purpose? Wow, that's like a really deep question. Yeah. So if I would, I don't know how deep we can go in this broadcast. <laughs> Uh, we can go as deep as we can, as, okay. as deep as we want. It's no problem. So, so there's like a different question and different level regarding this question. The first thing I would like to say, yeah, of course, you have like a life purpose. Like you came here to create something, to do something. And yeah. this thing is coming from your, um, from your kind of like desire, either from previous life or in kind of like when you were like not manifested as a physical being. Okay. So there is like a desire in you to experience something. So for mm. me, in my personal purpose is to experience connection. This is why I came in a disconnected, emotionally disconnected family and emotionally disconnected country, that country yeah. that has war. And you won't let no, know where like war is a manifestation of disconnection. So all my life purpose is to create uh, peace and connection. Connection. That was like my activism in Syria. That was like where I created Vegan Life, which is now the, one of the biggest Arabic uh, animal rights project. So my purpose was to create connection. And I, I guess that your purpose also has to do with like 
creating peace or like i don't know maybe you have like more access to your purpose and why you are here um, so this is and, what i yeah. see like in the kind of like in the physical level we have purpose but i had recently um, a deep dive experience with plant medicine and it showed me that wow it, i feel like goosebumps when i <laughs> when i speak about it like it's so touching like it's so hard touching because it showed me that we are creator and if we have a purpose that mean that somebody create us i had this like epiphany where yeah. i realized that actually i'm like creator i'm not like like when you take like plant medicine like ayahuasca or like all this like amazing teacher that they came to us here on earth to teach us lessons so i took plant medicine and i realized that i'm actually a creator and my mind was like but what's my life purpose on earth like i really want to get my life purpose and then the plant medicine was showing me that you are creator and keep repeating like you are creator and then i realized like you know like what if i'm a creator then i don't have purpose if i'm if i have purpose i'm some and i'm in somebody's creation somebody create me for a purpose uh i don't really believe in the idea of a god maybe but mm -hmm. i do believe in the idea of a higher guidance which at the level mm -hmm. is still us and mm -hmm. maybe your life purpose is just being just keeping it simple just just opening your heart to little things to creating mm -hmm. anything that yeah exactly to your... create yeah exactly to create and and really serve the planet while helping yourself and helping yourself while 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 serving the planet it's vice versa yeah. and the sole purpose i don't know i think we are lucky that we are actually finding our thought processes and ourselves in these kind of topics I think that we have reached a, a, a higher maybe level of consciousness, not to brag or something. And I think the main sole purpose of everybody that is, that is in the spiritual community is to awaken everything that needs to be awakened in everybody on the planet. So like mm -hmm. you said, maybe the sole purpose is about connection. It's about creating yeah. something wrong. And how I and see what you shared is really beautiful, like awakening everybody. And how I see it now, after understanding integration is awakening the part of me who is asleep yeah awakening the part of me who is like suppressed yeah. and i realized that every time i awaken a part of me i have a better connection with the outside oh. and vice versa like for example i use integration like for example if there is somebody in my life that bother me somebody that like create me stress trouble whatever i see it as an integrator to look inside so instead yeah. of like pointing the finger and you know the other finger is pointing at you, what I would say, oh, this finger, this person is triggering me in like this thing. So what I would do, there's like some tools I use it, like including shadow work, condition process, some of them from Teal Swan, some of them from my old yoga practice and meditation <laughs> practice, where yeah. I can go inside inward and connect to the um, aspect of me who is represented in this person who's annoying me what you are saying is that you don't have to change the other person you have to change the aspects of yourself that are still resonating with that negativity or right? to be more precise to understand why this uh, kind of like personality trait or why this behavior annoy you by understanding yourself so for example we had in the community that we live in there was like uh, uh, She's still living with us, but at some point she was like, there was like one girl, she was like annoying in me, the part who is needy. And yeah. I had like really, like, it was like triggering. Whenever there is like, she's in a situation of need, I go like, uh, I don't want to do anything with you. So that was like coming like several times. I was like, okay, Ram, you're teaching people integration. Now here's a big task, deal with it. And you know, like the community is like yeah. an amazing place where we can grow and like reflect to each other. So I was like, okay, instead of like blaming her or making her feel wrong for being needy, I looked inside myself and I found a very, very vulnerable child in me who's very needy, who get like, um, I don't know the English word, like- um, Reaction? Uh, wound? No. Wound, wound. Wound, wound yeah. One. yeah from, from my mom press like very which is like normal but for the child this is early because he was like in need for this 
And I realized that this child was so in need for closeness, for emotional presence, for many things. And I was like, actually, I was like sitting with this aspect of me and crying, like really crying. And I understand where this uh, rejection of need is coming from because my mom rejected me crying at that time. So what I made it, I made it wrong to be needy. Oh, wow. And the moment I understood this, yeah, exactly. The moment I understood this, the moment I understood that actually the neediness in her is not a problem in general. It's just because I reject my neediness. My mom rejects my neediness. And because I want to have a connection to my mom, I also internalize my parents by rejecting my own needy part. Wow. Wow. So it's it like, makes sense now. it, it uh, does make sense. It, okay. It does make sense in a way that uh like you said we must become aware and integrate and also play with the different part of ourselves that uh and question that is the most important thing to question like like you said why is this happening what is the root Mm -hmm. cause of everything that is happening and you really touched some powerful points and it makes me realize that yes you have had the experience you have had the trauma but now is the time to acknowledge the trauma and accept the emotion that actually wants to heal it. So a mm-hmm. uh, really nice perspective on integration and shadow work so far. We, we said that we would also speak about law of attraction. I'm so curious to hear uh, about it from you. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, like, how is the timeline for the uh, interview? Yeah, uh, okay. I think we, uh, we can stop it in like 10 minutes. Okay, so what I would like say to the world, like I, I really see that the law of attraction get like so wrongly misunderstood that if okay. somebody asks me in the street, do you believe in the law of attraction? I would say, no, 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 don't, don't count me one of those like people because there is like so much uh, naivety and so much like superficiality in this regard. Like we really don't understand how the law of attraction works. Like, and like let's say most of people are not in touch with their emotions and the law of attraction work with your emotional level with your vibrational level so if you are in a low vibrational level where you are thinking about um like uh, like having like low vibes feeling all this um kind of like depression thing all this thing which is not bad it's all accepted but you can't be matched to something like in a higher vibration And also I'm against this like kind of like suppressing and rejecting those like what we call negative emotion. I'm in the way of, I'm on the side of integrating those emotions and letting them be accepted. And when we actually do this, those vibrations, they kind of like elevate, they kind of like move to more um, like higher (coughs) vibes. So you say that the, one of the good ways to raise your vibration is to become aware and accept what is blocking you. Yeah, or like by turning inwards and see what part of you are like stuck in a negative vibration. So kind of like if you saw a child, like if you're running towards a goal and you have like a family, children around you, and there is somebody who is like like trying to crawl or somebody who is like stuck there and screaming in pain. What do you continue running to your goal? Mm. So that's what like actually doing, what actually people doing in this like law of attraction, they just like keep going. And then there's like so many aspects of them left behind. Integration yeah. is to look down and see like, oh, I have part of me who's like really sad and want attention before like I start to go outside and try to reach things. So the law of attraction work actually really amazing when you look into the resistance. So for example, um, one session I had also with a friend of mine, she, um, she, want, she was looking for a flat. And you know, in Berlin, it's almost impossible to find something. And she was like not finding anything. And later we did like a session with her where she addressed the part of her who resists living with others, living with people. Mm. And it turned out that this aspect of her is a very loving and spiritual aspect of her who got like very... Uh, kind of like I don't want also to go on details but like very painful relationship to the family so for this aspect of her he see or she see people as people in her family 
and therefore doesn't want to live with them anymore. So when we kind of like solve this resistance and let her know that we are also people and we are also connective and we are friend of her adult self, this resistance kind of like completely dissolved in one mm. session. And she was able to match, like even imagine in the second day, she get like two calls and she get two offers to live with people. Oh, so I, I, I love, I love what you explain here. And in a way, I really understand it. It's like, we are so complicated and we are so uh, programmed in a way since our childhood. We are so sensitive on the inside. We are, our, our subconscious likes gets everything that is happening around us and put it, puts it into our subconscious. And the thing is that I have realized this within myself that the more present I got, the more I began to observe my emotions, the more I began to open my heart, the more complete I am. The more complete I am. And it's like, yes, there are, there are negative aspects, aspects about myself, but the process is really loving that, really accepting that. Mm-hmm. And I loved this interview, actually. I loved it. You explain things in a way like Dil explains it. You really went to the cause of things. Do you really explain what happens after you accept it? How to accept it? I love it. Uh, so thank you, man. Thank you for uh, being here on this podcast. Um, I, lo- I also love the fact that I didn't have to speak so much in this interview. I just gave, I just <laughs> gave the answer yeah, that I understood. There's something in me. There's something in me when I talk about something that I'm passionate about. I was just like, oh, I want to share everything. Okay, but I perfect. want to thank you so much for like opening the space for this conversation. I know you, you have like an awesome, I, I watched some of your uh, YouTube videos already. It's like a great, really great start. I really suggest anybody who just like come across this video to watch all your videos. And you also encouraged me to kind of like work really more on like, or like, finding the resistance we are in the process now finding the resistance what's resisting us my partner my soulmate and i from uh, opening our youtube channel we already oh. like have it set up but we didn't kind of like upload the videos yet okay so hopefully it's gonna be ready this week and i would love to see you guys if you resonate with me or my energy or what i'm sharing about our youtube channel will be about I'm, integration I'm... healing and healthy diet and perfect i'm gonna share your youtube channel because i i'm sure that you're going to do great work and the thing is that if you are really passionate about it and you keep following that it's like it's getting bigger and funny and and fun and fun and fun and it's like you keep doing it and it's like your heart is opening because you're helping yourself and you're yeah, he- helping the world totally. uh, also like i feel like something that i would like to share also in the broadcast before we go what help you actually to live a happy life like a fulfilled life is to feel what is to follow what feels good to you like for me when you contact me it feels really good to go with you and to do this interview and i was like thank you what's what's about this guy that i like and then i watch your video and like oh he has like really soft like warm energy i like to connect with this vibe and your work with your people as well and i feel like also through my tribe and new tribe people will get like more exchange and have like a, a kind of like different perspective of life and world of and course. everything. So I'm really happy to do this with you and to, uh, yeah, start doing some awesome, great things like you do. We will, we will, and yeah. we are, and maybe we have always been. And yes, it's also about another thing that I would like to mention that it's not always about accomplishing the big things. It's also having the power to look at the small things and open your heart. Okay, Ram, uh, thank you for being here with me. I wanted to end this because I didn't want it to be too long, but the information, <laughs> the information that you gave us is super beneficial. It is that shadow work, that shadow work thing is super important. And I have also had moments when I resisted my emotions, but I'm beginning to realize that, yes, there is also power in accepting a ne- negative emotion. So Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for being here with us. And guys, see you on the next podcast. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Ciao.